2 to the n plus 1 is prime when n is 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So you might wonder, what other choices of n could I make so that 2 to the n plus 1 is prime? Now, unless n is equal to 0, that n has to be a power of 2. So your natural next guess might be that 2 to the 32nd power plus 1 is prime. But Euler showed that 641 divides 2 to the 32nd power plus 1. So at this point in human history, in 2020, it's not known what other choices of n you could make so that 2 to the n plus 1 is prime. And this is a situation where if you're confronted with a challenging problem, one thing to do is to make the problem a little different and see if you can make some progress. So let's kind of tweak this problem a little bit and see if we can solve our tweaked problem. So in the year 2020, we don't even know the answer to this question. Are there infinitely many primes of the form 2 to the n plus 1? But as we were saying, let's tweak that problem a little bit, and maybe the tweaked problem is going to be solvable. So instead of looking for primes of the form 2 to the n plus 1, let's look for primes of the form 2 to the n plus d, just for some other odd number d. So specifically, here's our question. For a given odd number d, are there infinitely many prime numbers of the form 2 to the n plus d? But that problem is really hard. So here's an even easier question. Let's just pick our favorite odd number d and ask, are there any primes of the form 2 to the n plus d? So let's work through a concrete example. Let's take a look at the number d equals 61 and see if we can find any primes of the form 2 to the n plus 61. So here's our goal. We want to find an n so that 2 to the n plus 61 is prime. We could just start trying different values of n. So when we try n equals 1, we note that 2 to the first plus 61, that's 63. And 63 is a multiple of both 3 and 7. It's not prime. So n equals 1 doesn't work. But let's think more generally, when does 3 divide 2 to the n plus 61? Those will be values of n for which 2 to the n plus 61 is definitely not prime. So let's look at powers of 2 modulo 3. So 2 to the 0, 2 to the first, 2 to the second, and so on. But look at that modulo 3. That's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on. Well, what this means is that if n is congruent to 1 modulo 2, then 2 to the n plus 61, that's exactly the same thing as 2 to the first plus 61. Well, 2 to the first plus 61 is a multiple of 3. It's 0 mod 3. So in this case, when n is 1 modulo 2, 2 to the n plus 61 can't possibly be prime. Let's try to do the same trick, but instead of with 3, let's do it with 7. Well, let's look at powers of 2, but modulo 7. So that's looking at 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, and so on, but modulo 7. That's 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, and so on. So the value of 2 to the n modulo 7 only depends on what n is modulo 3. And in particular, if n is 1 modulo 3, then 2 to the n plus 61 is exactly the same thing as 2 to the 1st plus 61. And again, it's a multiple of 7. So when n is 1 modulo 3, 2 to the n plus 61 can't possibly be prime. It's a multiple of 7. So we've determined situations when 2 to the n plus 61 is a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 7. Let's take a look at 2 squared plus 61. That's 5 times 13. So that's a situation where it's a multiple of 5. So n equals 2 is no good. So let's try to push this farther. Let's try to think about for which values of n is it the case that 5 divides 2 to the n plus 61. So let's look at the powers of 2 modulo 5. Those go 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, and so on. Right? Because after all, 2 is a generator of u5. So this means that when n is congruent to 2 mod 4, then 2 to the n is congruent to 2 squared modulo 5. And that means that when n is 2 mod 4, 2 to the n plus 61 is congruent to 0 modulo 5. So this is another situation where 2 to the n plus 61 can't possibly be prime. We've eliminated a lot of possibilities, but one of the numbers that hasn't been eliminated is 8. And when we try n equals 8, when we compute 2 to the 8 plus 61, we get 317. And 317 is prime. So we found an n, 8, so that 2 to the n plus 61 is prime. So here I've got a bunch of primes, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 241. And I've got OP2, the order of 2 in the group of units. And in some cases, like when the prime is 11 or 19, 2 is a generator of up in those cases. And in other situations, like when that prime is 241, well, then the order of 2 is uh, 24. You know, so powers of 2 are missing a lot of the elements in uh, u241. We're going to use this information in a little while uh, to make some progress on these questions about powers of 2 plus odd numbers being prime. 
here's a claim. I claim that we can use the moduli 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, and 24 to cover the integers. But what does that mean? That means that every integer is either 1 mod 2, 1 mod 3, 2 mod 4, 4 mod 8, 8 mod 12, or 0 mod 24. That's the sense in which I mean I can cover the integers. I can put every integer into at least one of those six categories. So let's prove this fact. I know that every integer is congruent to something between 0 and 23, inclusive, modulo 24. So all I need to do is to check that each of these six categories uh, cover all of the residues modulo 24. So let's start with the first one. I take a look at what are the things that are 1 mod 2, and I can cross out all of the odd numbers between 0 and 23. Now we'll remove all of the residues mod 24 that are also 1 mod 3. And some of these we've already removed, like 7. Uh, but we'll just go through and cross out everything else that's 1 mod 3. We'll remove everything that's 2 mod 4. We'll cross out everything that's 4 mod 8. We'll get rid of everything that's 8 mod 12. And now there's just one residue class left, mod 24. It's 0 mod 24. And we'll eliminate that one as well. And we're done. We've covered the integers with these six distinct moduli. That means that every single integer satisfies at least one of these six congruences. And the congruences have six different moduli. So now we're going to put all this previous stuff together to prove, I think, quite a surprising result. Remember what we saw with these distinct moduli in these covering systems. Every integer satisfies at least one of these highlighted congruences. We also previously explored a bunch of prime numbers in the order of two in the group of units. And now we've got a bunch of prime numbers so that the order of two is exactly the same thing as those disjoint covering moduli. Now I'll use the Chinese remainder theorem to choose a value of k so that k is negative 2 to the first mod 3, it's negative 2 to the first mod 7, it's negative 2 squared mod 5, it's negative 2 to the fourth mod 17, it's negative 2 to the eighth mod 13, and it's negative 2 to the zeroth mod 241. To be extremely specific, I could pick k equal to 1,518,781. What's the consequence of all this? No matter what n I pick, that n has to satisfy at least one of these six congruences. And because of my choice of k, 2 to the n plus k has to be divisible by 3, 7, 5, 17, 13, or 241. And in particular, no matter what n I pick, 2 to the n plus k can't be prime. So this is the theorem that we've proved. No matter what we choose for n, 2 to the n plus 1,518,781 is composite. This is a really neat result. And I think the method that we used to prove it is also really cool. And it really says something about the prime numbers. You know, you take the powers of 2, which, you know, admittedly are pretty spread out after a while. But you take those powers of 2 and you shift them by this particular number and you end up missing all of the prime numbers. I think this is an amazing picture.